Good morning, guys. Adam here, and I want to welcome to the show today Ed Rosenberg from Brooklyn, New York. Now, Ed and I first came into touch because I got suspended on Amazon after selling on Amazon for about four years and having no hiccups at all. I got the dreaded email that said your account privileges have been suspended, and um, you know, very Amazon-like, out of nowhere, no real explanation, and I felt extremely vulnerable. My business was shut down overnight. And Ed was the guy that uh, helped me out. He's been around the Amazon community for quite a while. Uh, most people who have been in the business for a while have heard of Ed. He's been on lots of podcasts and industry um, stuff. And so, Ed, I really want to thank you for taking the time to come on the show today to meet our community of sellers in around 20 countries around the world. So, Ed, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your background? How long have you been helping Amazon sellers? Okay, so first of all, Adam, uh, thank you very much. Um, normally, I'm the one interviewing people, so it's a little bit of a reversal here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I'm getting used to it, you know. But um, basically, I'm selling online for over 20 years, Amazon, 12 years. And I myself got suspended, similar to you. Also, like, you know, I have just one account and I was shocked. And, you know, I didn't know what to do. So I got myself back on. Um, but, event, but, you know, I realized that the reason why it happened is because there's a basic lack of information on how sellers can deal with it. And, you know, you call up one seller and, you know, no, no one really knew exactly. You don't know who you can trust and people get, you know, people, people know you're vulnerable. So I just figured that the easiest way to, you know, to solve this problem is I just created a WhatsApp chat with me and like my brothers and you know the ten people who are now selling on Amazon, and and it was very helpful. So eventually, people kept asking me to be adding to the to the chat, and it got bigger and bigger and bigger, and now it's thousands and thousands of sellers also all over the world, working together and, and helping each other. Now, initially, like, I didn't know, you know, like, no one's born knowing anything, so I, I knew very little about seller performance. And, um, but I was involved in so many people's um, suspensions, sort of like a go-between between consultants, that eventually people just asked me to take the cases. And that is exactly what I did, and I've done... I've been involved in thousands of suspensions. Wow. Uh, yeah. Literally yeah, it's, thousands. It's, yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very sad. And it's, it's um, you know, I disagree um, how Amazon handles it. Um, it. It's just, you know, I understand it's all about the buyer experience and that whatever they're doing is working to get more and more customers. People are becoming millionaires over it. But... Um, they don't. They don't see the big picture. It seems, and you know, if you're not informed about the process, and if you don't get the correct help, you you stand a very good chance of never getting back reinstated. Yeah, and I mean, you. It's it's fairly non-discriminate. I mean, people uh, tend to take it very personally when they see their account suspended, but Amazon have really no discretion. I mean, they, they suspend all kinds of sellers from small guys right up to big guys, right? I mean, you would, you would have seen some big accounts get suspended in time as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I've dealt with, you know, dozens of the top 200 Amazon sellers accounts and they, they would suspend, uh, you know, a top 20 Amazon account um, for silly violation like... Um, you know, like you're, conf you're confirming to uh, an order before you ship, which is probably the easiest suspension. So they'll suspend a $50 million, $75 million account with 100 employees, to, you know, with approvals from, from every company, with a category manager, um, with all kinds of contacts. They'll just suspend you like that if, if the metrics trips. And, and it's, a, it's a very big mistake. Uh, people make when they think that they're protected with account managers or they're protected with connections or they're protected with um, by how long they've been around. Um, it's very untrue. I mean, they'll suspend the largest accounts for the smallest suspensions. It's amazing. So you see this every single day. I'm in your group, uh, your Facebook group, and there's some fantastic information in there. Um, 
you know, what is the usual state of mind that you see, like when people come to you, you know, they might have a 20 grand a week business or whatever it is, and then all of a sudden they get this email, what state of mind are they generally in by the time they hear about Ed Rosenberg? <laughs> right, so m most people, um, and I, I don't know what the psychology is, but it seems like people would, would prefer to, you know, save two thousand dollars as opposed to losing, you know, a half a million <laughs> a month. <laughs> An interesting psychology, but um, it, it's amazing. I guess they don't realize, and, and um, but but normally the, the first thing is they email Amazon saying saying it's a, it was a mistake, right? So that they should check again. And now Amazon is not. People look at seller performance like like we're here. You have the seller. And then there's like a big wall, and then there's like three people on the other side, you know, smoking cigarettes with sunglasses, laughing about us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's not that. They're, 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 they're not having meetings about, about you, and they're not having... They're, they're in a situation where they have, I don't know, a thousand or two thousand people spread out across the world um, trying to manage... Um, a significant part of, of of the world economy, right? I, I think I'm, I'm sure if you take the total set that third-party sellers are doing on all the Amazon, it's probably bigger than most countries. And these people are responsible to police, um, you, you know, millions of accounts. And they, the only way this can work is they have a protocol, and they're trained a certain way. And if you don't give them what they want, if they see something on your account and you don't give them what they want, how are you going to correct it, then you're not going to get back. You know, it's not, you know, it's not, you know, two plus two has to equal four. You know, if you say, come on, let's make it equal five, it's not going to change anything. So you got to give them what they want. And if you don't give them what they want, it's not going, you're not going to get reinstated. So, so the first mistake I would say people make is contacting them saying it's a mistake. The chances of that working is zero. Mm -hmm. and, and unless you unless you really think it's a mistake and you provide solid evidence, like you're going to small claims court and showing why it was a mistake, that, that could be fine. Mm -hmm. But just lashing out saying, check again, you guys are crazy, you've been doing this for 10 years, that's not going to work. <laughs> do, you think it's, do you think there's any of this um, being artificial intelligence in Amazon that's picking up, just algorithmically picking up something, flagging it, and then it's not like somebody in Amazon is sitting there scanning this stuff, right? Is it, it's all algorithm based, isn't it? That, that picks up these violations. Right. So, so from from the way I understood, uh, from speaking to like a lot of the ex Amazonians and sometimes even people currently in Amazon, from what I understand, it's a combination. So, if if let's say if you have a safety complaint, and and um, a lot of times. You know, like I, I've seen a safety complaint where the customer left on a product review that, you know, this is a bomb, you know, meaning that it's great, but bomb, right? Yeah. Boom, red flag. <laughs> right. So, from what I, so I, I, I think that the way I understand that I, things get flagged and they get queued, and then a human being normally reviews it and then pushes the button. So there could be a mistake and there could be a false positive because you have the human component, but... Generally, it's it's a combination of the data is is you know flag, flag something, and then a human being reviews it because there's no way a human being can review billions of sites. You know, like if you, if, if you don't make any noise while you're selling an Amazon, you can go years and years without anybody looking at your account. From what I can tell. Yeah, that's interesting. So, I mean, it is it is interesting what you say about um giving them what they want and, and it's when you stop and think there's 150 billion in revenue on Amazon and half of it roughly is done by third party sellers so it's a 75 billion dollar economy which is as you point out a substantial amount of money um, so I, can, I can tell you're in Brooklyn <laughs> with the horns. yeah yeah I don't know that's what happened to me during the day I'm sorry so working with you I found it was just calming to know that somebody who had done this before I think it's sort of take a deep breath, hire an expert. I, t I train my community and say to people, don't try to be every instrument in the orchestra, be the conductor. You know, don't hesitate to pay experts because like you pointed out, I think it, 
I think I paid you a thousand dollars to sign up, and then a thousand dollars once the suspension was lifted. Is that what you charge? Yeah. It depends. Each, each one is different, and you see, the word suspension for a seller just means one thing: that they cannot sell. Yeah. Um, but in reality, suspension is is a very varied word. At least, at least for me, I have to know the details. You know, for, so so. Like for example, you can go to a doctor, and if you're not feeling well, you can if you have a headache, you can give you a Tylenol. And most doctors will probably heal, you know, 100% of those cases by giving a Tylenol. Then you can go. Another person could can not be feeling well, and you know, God forbid, it could be you know a serious type of cancer, you know, with with a 10% cure rate, and, and and the guy dies. So imagine someone goes to the doctor and says. What are your chances of healing eight patients? Right. Well, well, it depends. If you have a headache, a hundred percent, and if you have skin cancer and you're ninety-five years old and you and you and you hang out in Florida all day, you know, one percent. So that's why anytime you're dealing with pricing and chances of getting back, like when someone asks me, what are the chances of getting back? Or what's your percentage of getting suspended, reinstated? I know that that seller knows nothing about suspensions because it's so varied. So you yes. can take a seller that, that was suspended for counterfeit four times in three months and he promised twice that he's never going to sell brand names and then Apple sent the rights owner complaint. Yeah, the chances are probably zero that he'll get back. Right, right, right. But the seller, only will hear, he only hears one thing, I'm going to get back. So without knowing the details, we can't really give the chance of really accurately talk about price. Gotcha. Okay, so you know, basically, if we get suspended, the, the idea is to contact you. You'll have a look at what the email says, and and then basically quote what it'll cost. Uh, is that correct? Um, yeah, I mean, there are others, you know, who do it also who I can recommend you who are also, you know, excellent. So yeah, definitely um, doesn't have to be me at all. But but I mean, just just the idea of of you know, it's not just looking at the at the email. It's, Sort of looking at the account history, and if you were suspended before, what you were suspended before. Generally, Amazon doesn't like the same thing happening to you over and over. So, like I found that if you get suspended for late shipping and then inauthentic and then right owner, as long as each one is only one, you can keep getting back, even if it's let's say eight suspensions in two years. But if it's the same thing happening over and over, you know they don't want your promises you didn't keep last time. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so they want to see that history. In my case, it was the first suspension ever. It turned out to be a mistake, so it was good. But, um, um, yeah, that was really good. So, Ed, what would be the best way for people to contact you should they get that dreaded email? Um, and uh, what? how's the best to, to hook into you, uh, you know, on an ongoing basis? And then also when they need help, how do they get that help? Right, so thank you for asking. And, you know, really the best, is if they, if they don't get suspended um, to begin with. I hate when people tell me, oh, so many suspensions, that's good for business. You know, I'm, I'll be happy if nobody gets suspended right. and I'll find another way, right. you know, to make money. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, but but um, I have a, um, a, you know, a great email list. and it's, it's asg.com, asgtg.com. You can put it underneath yeah. the video. Maybe just say that again, just slowly. A-S... A-S-G... TG.com. AS. Yeah, okay. We'll put it under the video. Yeah, Amazon Sellers Group. And, and um, it's basically the information which I get is from you know, all kinds of suspensions and from all kinds of contacts. And I have an email list which is built off, like I said, the information of multiple forms and multiple contacts, which, in, which educates sellers on what they're cracking down. Yes. Because, you know, most people are not going to sit there studying Amazon's terms of services and right. policies. And right. the best way to avoid suspension is to sort of see where the tea leaves are going. So if, if an article comes out um, that you can't trust Amazon's reviews, the, you know, Amazon can decide to crack down on the top, on the, on, on the bottom 10% abusers of reviews, and it doesn't happen all within one day, it happens within a few weeks. So if you can get that real-time information right away, knowing that Amazon is cracking down on returns and on reviews, you can then fix the issue and, you know, 
whatever the cracking down, if it incentivized your views, you can fix the issue before you get suspended. So that information in my mind is priceless because it's, it's like a real-time Twitter feed almost of the most accurate information on, on Amazon seller performance. Yeah, and it is very commercial, your group. Like, that's what I like about it. It's not fluffy or it's not hack-based. It's, it, you know, you, you're plugged into a very solid network of business people. Uh, so the advice is just very non-fuss, no-muss, um, good stuff. So, uh, and is that basically the place to go? And then from there, they can contact you if they get suspended. Is that the best path? Yeah. Yeah, and if they get suspended, I, I, you know, I, I made now a form. You know, where they, they fill out all the uh, details and relevant questions and, you know, I give them a call and then if they want to use me, then, you know, I try to set it up that way where they pay something to take the case and then something where they get reinstated. This way, I, you know, I'm invested in it. And yeah, I think it was more than fair. I mean, I was happy to pay because I was, I was losing that much every day, so... Um, yeah, and I, yeah, I just want to be idiot. You know, like I, I'm happy to recommend others, um, but anybody who has any decent account, um, you know, that like, like the chances of getting reinstated when you take somebody like me, unless I tell you up well, like certain certain suspensions, I'll tell you up well, like a forged document, or yeah. I'll tell you up right that the chances are very small of getting back. But a standard suspension, if you don't make like a whole mess out of it by the time it comes to me almost 100% of getting reinstated. Not, not, not guaranteed, there's always variables, but it's very high of getting in it. And as you keep responding, see, Amazon doesn't know that now you hired somebody. So yeah. I have to make what you said, that the last eight responses make sense, and not that, you know, and not contradict, so it limits what I can say. So the best and, 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 and it's not just saying stuff, it's, you know, you have to actually do it. Not, it's not just a plan, you know, if you're, if you're saying you're not going to sell branded items you're not, and you have a system set up that you're not going to get rights on the complaints, you have to really do it. <laughs> That's yeah, the plan. Yeah. So it's probably the best, like similar to legal advice, when you get the notice, call your lawyer rather than speak because I think the more you interact with Amazon, the more mess there is possibly for you to undo, perhaps. Would that be correct? It's best just to reach out to an expert and say, here's the email, can you handle it? Yeah, because because it, it, it's you know it's not that I'm so smart. It's the experience. Of course, it which, is. Yeah, yeah. So so someone that someone that's seen you know twenty five hundred suspensions compared to somebody um, um, sure. who's only seen you know his first. So you know, the, the chance of of him messing up and is you know and and, it, and it's hard. When you're dealing with seller performance, sometimes I feel like I'm trying to get an elephant through a keyhole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's very easy to mess up. You know, like if the invoice is not exactly what they want, so if the plan is not set up exactly how they want. Sure. Um, you have inventory which contradicts your plan. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So all all these things. There's so many chances to mess up that you know if you value your account. Yeah. I think you know. I think it, you know. Honest advice. Don't hire me. Hire someone else. But, but honest advice. Don't you know. Do some have experience and someone who you trust and have your best interest in mind, and you're, you're leaving down a path of disaster. 100% agree. 100% agree. So, guys, if you want to connect with Ed, uh, the website is there, and uh, I will put it uh, onto this video for you. And Ed, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate. It. I appreciate the help that you gave me. I hope to never see you again. Please don't take it personally. <laughs> But no, 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 I hope, like I said, I hope, you know, <laughs> I, I hope there would be a better way of especially experienced sellers totally. of, of getting reinstated, you know, some kind of, uh, you know, like I was even thinking seller performance, you know, I'm sure you would be happy to pay 250 an hour to sell a performance to get them on the phone for 15 minutes. 100%, you know. 100%. No, I, I really appreciate it and, and I, I'm really wrapped that you are out there doing what you're doing and honestly serving the Amazon seller community because God knows Amazon's not. So um, <laughs> so thank you so much and um, I really appreciate your time today and um, we'll refer some business your way. Really appreciate the time. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks, I appreciate Ed. it. Cheers. Bye.